I will never stop making these videos. I'm going to make more videos. I'm going to title them similarly. Progressives need to understand the world is dangerous, okay? Conservatives seem to know this. In fact, I would say that many conservatives might actually overreact in, 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 uh, in response to the dangers of the world. But how many times are we going to see a story about a young progressive or liberal couple who want to go and talk about love and acceptance and they go to dangerous places and disappear or die or have bad things happen? This is a story from CTV Montreal just the other day. Family of Quebecer missing in Burkina Faso reassured Ottawa is taking the case seriously. These two young people, this is a Canadian woman, this is an Italian man. They went to Burkina Faso. Not a particularly safe place. They're missing. I can only imagine what happened. It seemed, you know, I asked a friend of mine, can you name any story about a conservative going to a dangerous country and being kidnapped or killed? And for the most part, no. Of course it happens. But typically when you hear these stories, it's like, sure, maybe like a soldier or a contractor was captured. I'm talking about someone who puts on, you know, nice clothes and talks about love and acceptance and then goes to a really dangerous place without security. It seems like most of the stories we hear, you have these people saying there's love in the world and that, you know, you could like, uh, uh, apparently it, it might not be real, but people are sharing like, this image that, that is supposedly of this woman talking about finding love all throughout the world. And of all places, they went to Burkina Faso, okay? So this is like near Mali and Nigeria. You've got Boko Haram operating in, in parts in, in these areas. I don't know necessarily about Burkina Faso, but you, as a Western person going into these places, you are taking one of the biggest risks you've ever taken. And I'll point to it time and time again. I'm certified to, like, it doesn't mean much, but I've been to dangerous places. I've experienced this. Oh, I can't stress it enough, but let's read the story. And I've also got some other sources that I really think are important for you. This website is called touristkilled.com, okay? I just recently found it. And it's a map of stories of tourists around the world who are killed. And Central and South America have the most stories, but clearly this is not every, every story. It's not. It's just a collection of some. But let's read, let's read what happened. The family of a Quebec woman who went missing with her Italian friend in West Africa last month says it's, it finally feels federal authorities are taking the case seriously following several frustrating days seeking answers from Ottawa. Sherbrooke native Edith Blaze and her Italian friend Luca Ticetto were traveling by car in Burkina Faso when all communication with their families abruptly ended December 15th. Media have reported the disappearance as being treated as a possible kidnapping. But Blaze's sister, Melanie... Berger and Blaze said in an interview Monday that the family has received no information the pair were abducted. It's a possibility about uh, Berger, uh, Berger and Blaze said about the pos uh, about whether the fa the pair were kidnapped. There aren't 1,000 different scenarios of what could have happened, but we've re received no clues and we can't confirm or deny. Tachetto and Blaze, 34, were last seen in the city of Bobo Diolasso in Burkina Faso's southwest and had planned to drive to the capital of Ougadoga. Sorry, I'm not trying to pronounce it wrong on purpose. I just can't do it. Before crossing into neighboring Togo, Blaze planned to volunteer with an organization attempting to reforest parts of Togo. Berger and Blaze said the family called the Global Affairs Canada's hotline at the end of December to see whether federal authorities could determine whether the two had crossed the border into Togo and if data from their passports or visas was collected. After hearing no news for three or four days, the family called back only to be, to be asked for Blaze's passport number. So I want to point out one thing important too. We don't necessarily know the, pol the politics of these individuals. It's not like it's being reported they're, they're overly progressive. But I will point out, for one, it's very likely based on this, you know, the, the hair, she, her hair is, is dreads. It is, look, conservatives can have these things too, but it, it looks very much so like she's like an environmentalist hippie type. Not to, not, I'm not trying to prejudge her based on her looks, but we can learn some things about which culture she is likely a part of. And the fact that she was traveling there to reforest parts of Togo says to me, she's likely a lefty hippie type uh, environmentalist. These are the people who constantly talk about all the love in the world. And, and, and look, man, I got respect for that. Respect for those who want to make the world a better place. I do not condemn or judge her because she wanted to do a great thing. What frustrates me, frustrates me to no end, is that the world is extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. And these people who grew up in these Western countries just apparently don't know that. And, and, and it's mostly the progressive left. They think the world is safe. When you see stories like this, the willingness of people to go into some of the most dangerous places in the world and they end up being killed or going missing, it says to me exactly why they're absolutely okay with open borders. 
Look, I'm not, I'm not going to say the Democrats are all advocating open borders. You can debate that all day and night. But certainly the far left are. These protesters in New York for the Democratic Socialists are holding up signs saying no borders, no profits, no prisons. What do you think will happen with no borders, with no law enforcement or security? I, 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 could, I could say similar things to the libertarian right. You know, people talk about how they don't need a government. Sure, but listen, we have security forces. We have people watching us while we sleep. I mean that metaphorically. The people who possibly abducted them, what could their politics be? The people who have killed other tourists, people who have claimed to be acting at the behest of ISIS, what do you think they will do if no one is checking for them as they try to enter countries? If they come to the U.S. and just walk through our open border, what do you think they'll do? They'll do bad things. They'll do things like this. They'll abduct people. They'll hurt people. The frontline services at Global Affairs were really deficient. Uh, Virgin Blay says it was confusing. They didn't seem like they were making any effort. The family's frustrations were assuaged following a meeting, assuaged, following a meeting Sunday with Global Affairs officials. Last Friday, we, we really felt we were in a bureaucratic impasse. Uh, Blaze said from Sherbrooke, about 150 kilometers east of Montreal. But since yesterday, it's been like night and day. She attributed the change in approach to media attention since the first report of her sister's disappearance in a Sherbrooke newspaper uh, Saturday. So here, here's what I want to do. I don't, don't want to... Look, they say, a Canadian government uh, website recommends avoiding non-essential travel to Burkina Faso due to the threat of terrorism. In January 2017, six Quebecers were murdered in a terror attack in Algadoga. I, I may, may, probably pronouncing it wrong. Well, if she knew this happened, then I can't blame her, and I would actually say it's very brave. It's very brave to go somewhere where six Quebecers were murdered in a terror attack because you believe that much in saving the forest and, and reforesting certain areas. But what, what frustrates me is how many people feel like they can just go wherever they want. Let me tell you two truths. First, obviously, the world is very dangerous. We do need border security. The second is that women are disproportionately more likely to, uh, at risk when going to these places. And within that, Okay, I've talked to some people, especially with this. One of the scenarios I went through at the training session was all of the women in our party were kidnapped at gunpoint, and we got to, okay, let me start over. This is a good story. It's important. This was part of training scenarios, okay? It was fun. It was make-believe, and you, and you get to partake in it, too. Before I get into the very serious stuff, they, they create a scenario where you're at a market, and they give you an objective, you're either a security personnel or, say, a journalist, depending on what you're, what you're training for. We, they, they had a bunch of people pretend to be, uh, it was like a Middle Eastern country, and they pretended to be villagers in a marketplace. And they said, go, and, you know, go in here and try and meet the person you're supposed to meet, and we're going we're gonna, to uh, you know, train you for the scenario. We all go in, sit down, and we're talking and sitting around, and like, we're bored. And we're like, what's going on? We're just sitting here while people go about buying stuff. Then they all stop. They say, stand up. We stand up, and, he's, and he says, look around at your, your group. And we look around, and he says, what do you notice? And that's when we realized it. Someone in our group was kidnapped while we were waiting around and didn't realize it, and they were kidnapped. One of the security trainers came in, grabbed one of the guys, and walked out, and no one noticed. And we'd been sitting there for like 10 or 15 minutes confused when we realized the person was kidnapped. And he said, you didn't notice. You weren't paying attention. You cannot lose track of your friends. They will be gone before you realize it. This is what likely happened. They were kidnapped. But this is where it gets really scary. The training was fun. Don't get me wrong. But we were driving in our car to the next training, to the next training, when all of a sudden a bunch of guys jumped out from the side of the road with guns pointed at us. Prop they were real guns, but they had orange you know, blockers there, and, and they had the tags in the, in, the, in the chamber so you knew they weren't armed. But they, 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 they came up with guns screaming and yelling, and they grabbed the women, and they made all the men lay down on their stomachs, and they brought the women behind a shed where we heard the women scream. And the women were screaming terrible things because this scenario was the men kidnapped the women and gang raped them behind a shed while they held us at gunpoint. Then they took all of our stuff and they told us to leave and we would never see our, see our friends again. That was part of the training to receive this certification. And what we were told by the security afterwards, uh, we all came back, the women came in and they were laughing, saying it was fun to engage in this, you know, fake screaming and stuff. But this, what he said about the scenario, this, 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 could, this could happen. The women will be kidnapped. The men may be killed. It depends on whether or not they want to, you know, waste their bullets killing you. But he said it's very likely the men would be killed and the women would be kidnapped for slavery. What do you think is worse? It's entirely your opinion. Maybe it's better to die than to be a sex slave. 
Maybe you'd rather live, even if it meant that's the case. But the point is, men and women face different things. Someone asked, what should we do in that scenario? And he says, say a prayer for your friends. You'll never see them again. And that's the reality of what happens when you're trained for what really goes on in these parts of the world. Doing this training, for me, I was a very smug asshole about it. Why? Because I've been to these places before. I know how this game works. And the funny thing about the training, I'm going to add as a side note, is that the, one of the things they stole from me, inadvertently, was a GPS tracker. And I smugly said to them, the guys who kidnapped the women and took my belongings didn't realize that one of the things they took from me actually operates as a GPS and they couldn't tell. As soon as we left, I'd have called the State Department and said, here's the device and here's how you can track it. And they went, really? And I was like, yeah. Uh-huh. Here's the thing, too. It's possible they steal your GPS. They steal your phone. The thing is... Most people wouldn't know to do what I did. And, I'm, and, and again, I'm a techno, I, I, I do gadgets, I do tech. The point is, the world is a dangerous place. Most people haven't done this, okay? This was paid for by Disney. I felt like I didn't need it. And for the most part, I still think I don't. But it shows that it, at, at least, at least you have that, when, when I say to you, the world is extremely dangerous. And if you want to go to Burkina Faso, if you even want to go to Morocco, okay? You want to go to these countries where they don't have the same security we do. Do not be surprised when someone bashes you in the mouth with the butt of their rifle and then violates your best friend in front of you and there's nothing you can do about it. And, I, and, and, and I, 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 I'm terrified to, to, to think about what happened to this young couple. I really am. Because I have seen people die. I have seen people get shot. Okay? I have been to these places. And it frustrates me every single day I hear these stories. It frustrates me when I hear about news organizations sending young, inexperienced people into extremely dangerous places. Some people are not made for this. Some people should not go and do this. The last thing I'll add is, if this woman knew what she was getting into, and maybe she was trained, maybe she, I'm not, I don't know if she was or wasn't, if she had the training, if she knew what risks she faced, then she has my respect. But if this is another story about young, hippy-dippy progressives who think they can go to Burkina Faso, and be safe, then, then no, you don't. And uh, these stories happen all the time. Okay, the, I'll, I'll point to one last thing. Touristkilled.com, okay? Even in Europe, even in New York, Central America and South America take the cake for the most part in the most stories they have posted. The world is dangerous. And this is why I think, you know, for me, as somebody who's been on the left mo for most of my life, uh, you know, I was like far left younger and now I'm kind of just moderate leftist. When I hear talk about border security, I'm like, yeah, I get it. I really do. I really do get it. There are children who are, who are kidnapped, beaten, violated by disgusting, psychotic monsters. And this stuff happens all over the world all the time. And to believe the world is just full of love and skittles and rainbows is a, is a utopian ideology that's just not true. I'll, 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 okay, one more thing. Not everybody's crazy. You can find love and peace truly everywhere in the world. But there's a reason why we have police. And there's a reason why people in some areas of this country want to own guns. Plain and simple. Stick around. More videos to come.